Hey, folks, welcome back to the show. Dennis Miller here, joined now by a good cat, founder of the American Islamic Forum for Democracy, Dr. Zudi Jasser. He is the author of A Battle for the Soul of Islam, An American Muslim Patriot's Fight to Save His Faith. Dr. Jasser, welcome, my friend. Dennis, it's always great to be with you. Thanks for having me back. What's happening in Muslandia? Things cool as usual? Or give me the breakdown. What's this What's this story about mosque surveillance coming out in New York? Give me the players. Well, uh, you know, this lawsuit uh, was raised in 2012, and many of us uh, were saying it was inappropriate. The NYPD was appropriately following leads into whether it was mosques, Muslim businesses, uh, where it may lead them. And uh, many of the community said, oh, their rights are being violated. And uh, then the AP did a uh, long story series that uh, uh, gave them the uh, Pulitzer. And uh, many of us were concerned about the story because it revealed uh, some undercover work that was being done in the Muslim Student Association and others. And the judge uh, just a few days ago ruled that uh, their suit had no merit, that in fact, if there's anyone to blame, it's the AP for revealing sources that probably should... And, and casework that probably caused the harm that these people were worried about. And ultimately, I think, you know, for, I testified to Congress in 2011 that, uh, we Muslims should be transparent. We're not sacrificing any of our civil rights, but that, uh, if police are doing work and it happens to end up in a mosque or elsewhere, that you, you can't just do blind random work. It has to be smart police work and the federal judge. Uh, ruled in our favor and, and in favor of rational thinking for police work. And it's sad that uh, the AP doesn't have to give back their Pulitzer and uh, also uh, do a uh, mea culpa for all the costs that they did to the NYPD and the New York City uh, um, Police Department. Yeah, U.S. District Judge William J. Martini, who's so salient here, it appears he's not quaffing his surname for lunch, said that, uh, <laughs> I love this quote, it's so common sense, the police could not have monitored New Jersey for Muslim terrorist activities without monitoring the Muslim community itself, end quote. <laughs> exactly. Can you believe we got to litigate stuff like this now? And, and this is what I testified to Congress. We had a press conference at the steps of one police plaza in March 2012 of Muslim reformists. There were 30 of us there that said, listen, we need your help. Please don't take uh, what these groups are trying to do into uh, 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 balkanizing the American community. We need the NYPD monitoring and and, uh, not violating our civil rights, but at least helping us weed out the bad apples in our community. So do your good police work. And if there was any, you know, if there was any merit, there would have been cases thrown out left and right. And the Muslim Student Association has had such uh, illustrious members as uh, Imam Awaki, who ended up uh, being... Uh, necessarily uh, targeted and killed uh, in Yemen. So this is not a a benign organization. And uh, the NYPD was just doing good work. It's just sad that it's not being covered, uh, uh, you know, cover to cover all over the media to say, look, the the stories that we broke last year about all this surveillance and, and how Muslims are living in fear is just complete hogwash. Well, Zudi, you know I dig your pragmatism. Uh, how's this be? Is that translated out to the community? How are people in New York uh, viewing the Judge Martini's decision? Are they pissed or are they cool with it? Where, where is it at? You know, that, that's that's really a great question because you'd yeah. think if the only people upset are the the uh, plaintiffs, uh, the, all the businesses and others that uh, supposedly were targeted have been quiet and you know, they realize that uh, uh, if anybody's at risk, it's the moderate Muslims and the regular uh, good patriotic American Muslims that uh, see this work and, and want to live in, and uh, be kept safe by the NYPD and police forces and the FBI all over the country. So, uh, you know, the scuttlebutt on the streets is, uh, let's go on. That, that's enough of this uh, victim mongering. Yeah. Well, let's take it to the other coast. Then. We're talking to Dr. Zudi Jasser, by the way. He's the founder of of the American Islamic Forum for Democracy. He's also the author of A Battle for the Soul of Islam, an American Muslim Patriot's Fight to Save His Faith. He's also a good man, and he's also somebody I admire immensely because he's got a combination of pragmatism and cojones that I find 
uh, well, I, I, I just find so admirable. Let's take it out to Berkeley. What do we got? We got another open-minded professor insisting kids tweet pro-Islamic views. Could these guys miss the cosmic point anymore, for God's sakes? You know, and, and the reason that's such an important story is you have all these uh, so-called professors who are basically exploiting students for their own activism. You've got this professor, that uh, Tariq Fatah, a colleague of ours uh, who's a Muslim columnist in Toronto that's on our coalition, said, you know, he had a student send him a note and say, you know, this is weird. This professor uh, has told us to tweet about Islamophobia, and whenever we think there's uh, uh, being discrimination or bigotry against Muslims, that we need to tweet about it. And basically, he turned a couple hundred students into foot soldiers for his own propaganda that America is anti-Muslim and anti-Islam. I had similar, I had a student at Marquette University uh, uh, send me a note that uh, um, the professor there had identified my organization, our organization, the American Islamic Forum, as being anti-Muslim and anti-Islam, and we're trying to do some research into uh, exactly what he was asked to do. So, you know, it's the, the university setting, as you well know, turns into not just education, but uh, activism for one side of the equation. Man, and, I can't believe and, there's uh, no shame. I can't believe there's no moment of illumination when you hear yourself insisting to kids that they use a form of free expression to tweet exactly what you tell them. I, I, that's that's one of the things about, uh, you know, the zealots in the Muslim community where I go, come on, what are you nuts? Do you not even hear yourself what you're doing at this point? I mean, you don't insist somebody believe what you believe, especially when you've got their grade hanging, the, the scimitar of Damocles of their grade hanging over their head, for God's sakes. And and the question students are asking appropriately, much better than these brainwashing professors, is Islam is not a race. It's not an identity. It's a ideology. So how could you be phobic and bigoted towards an idea? Muslim it, Muslims are those who adhere to an idea or a faith. So to say that somehow that's equivalent to racism or, or other types of uh, uh, immutable things is just is just absurd that really students need to begin to push back and let us know if they have other examples because this really shows how these uh, reports where they put out that organizations like ours are so-called anti-Islam, they're trying to suppress free, free speech so that we don't make any headway. And it's interesting, yesterday on Facebook, some of the care organizations tweeted, they said, oh, you guys need to open more chapters in Texas and elsewhere because Jasser's organization is spreading there. And uh, I, I just think it goes to show that as we make more headway, they're going to do whatever possible to tar and feather people against them as being bigots and suppressing our free speech. Yeah, well, Zudi, save money on a publicist because their lack of an imprimatur is the best thing you could say for your organization. You know, you Amen. can judge somebody by the caliber of the people who detest them. And the silver lining in this Berkeley story is our kids get such a poor basic education, half of them don't know how to spell Islamophobic, much less fit it into a tweet. All right, brother, you can follow Dr. Jasser on Twitter at Dr. Zudi Jasser, Z-U-H-D-I-J-A-S-S-E-R. Hey, Judy. Hey, Zudi, you're behind. All right, Doc, how's life? You good? Doing well. All right. Great. You're a groovy cat. Go get him. Anytime. Thanks. All Thanks, right. Dennis.